Well, folks, I just got back from my weekend adventure where I use this Bluetti Charger One to power all of my devices, cook all of my meals with my hot plate, run my coffee maker, and essentially do everything off-grid through my vehicle for the entire weekend. And before I get into the complete review and installation of the Bluetti Charger One, I wanted to share with you a few things that I think you should consider before using any of these alternator chargers. And before I get into those concerns, it's important to know that I did actually enjoy using the Blue Eddy Charger One. I didn't have any problems with it. It charges my power station fine. And in fact, it charges my power station very quickly. But the first thing that I really think you should consider is if you are hooking up a charger system to your vehicle's alternator, and you have a problem with your vehicle, for example, your battery goes bad, your alternator, anything related to the electronics of your vehicle, it is possible that the dealership or the manufacturer of your vehicle could blame one of these products on that problem. And this is important to note because when you hook up a alternator charger, regardless of whatever brand it is, you are hooking up a hot connection from your engine compartment all the way to the back of your vehicle wherever you have the alternator charger hooked up. And the Bluetti one does come with a very nice home style fuse or circuit protector that will turn off when it overloads and then you can reset it very easily. But as designed, the hot lead does go from the battery, it goes through my firewall, all the way to the back seat of my Jeep before you hit that surge protector. And the reason that's important is if you have any issues between that surge protector and your battery with the cable, then it's essentially gonna be a hot lead. And while I do appreciate them installing that surge protector in the power line, I wish they had done it a little closer to the battery that way, if you do have an issue that you have less cable that you have to have worry about being hot, it would be fairly easy to simply remove that circuit breaker and install it right here for me. So that's something that I will do in the future. I do think that Blue Eddy should consider doing that out of the gate. That way you minimize the amount of free running cable that you have that could potentially go hot. And generally speaking, the amperage on a vehicle's alternator is designed with just a little bit of wiggle room, meaning that if you're gonna be pulling a large load from your vehicle, you may need to consider upgrading your alternator. So this does go back to the original thing that I was saying that you could cause some kind of damage with your charger. And so the last note I wanna make before I get into my review in which I am satisfied with the charger one is that your vehicle's alternator potentially has a limited amount of amps that it can provide. And so it is possible that you could either draw so much power that your starter battery never fully recharges, meaning that all of the power is going into whatever you're recharging in the back of your vehicle, or you could simply overload your vehicle's alternator in a sense that it will prematurely wear out the alternator. With all of those things being said, I have purchased an alternator and I have it in my garage that if I do have problems with my system, I will upgrade and add about 50 amps of service that would essentially offset the cost of running the Charger One. So now that I've shared those disclaimers, let's get back to the regular video. Hey folks, welcome back. I've got pretty limited time today and I wanted to install this Blue Eddy Charger One in my Jeep in order to get ready for a camping trip that I have coming up this weekend. And I've got just a little more than an hour until sunset. So I want to, as fast as I can, get this thing installed by routing the power cable from the engine compartment through the passenger compartment into the bed of the Jeep. I've had the Blue Eddy AC240 and B210S in the back of my Jeep since they were released sometime in February last year. The power station and that extension battery are the perfect amount of power for me for a weekend adventure. However, I do have to come back plug in the power station and recharge it at the end of my adventures. And on my prior vehicle, my minivan, I had a solar panel. That solar panel would top me off throughout the week to get me ready for my next weekend adventure. However, my rooftop tent has a rounded surface and none of those foldable or 
flexible solar panels that I have are compatible with mounting on that rooftop tent. So let me quickly get this thing installed and then the rest of this video will be essentially a review of how this thing performs throughout the weekend. And for me, step one is going to be routing the cable through the firewall so that it goes directly into the passenger compartment of the Jeep. Well guys, to make this so much easier, this is my brake master cylinder. There was a grommet right there this grommet right here i pop that out i'm gonna drill a little hole in that and then i'm gonna run the cable through that that hole is much easier than trying to go through the main wiring harness on the passenger side so if you are going into your compartment or your passenger compartment from under your engine hood i highly recommend entering through this hole that is close to the power booster so I've got the cable ran i haven't hooked it up to the battery yet because i want to wait until i've got everything else set up straight over the top here through that grommet down along all of the trim and all the way i'm going to set it here for now when i get a little more time i'm going to run a hole through here and then you can just barely see the black that that plastic there that part down there next to the bed is where the the weep hole for excess pressure is. So when you slam your doors, it allows the pressure to escape through there. So somewhere there, there is a hole that I will be able to eventually route the MC4 cables through. But in the meantime, just for the sake of a quick setup, I'm gonna go through the back glass here on the hard shell roof. If I had probably one more hour to work on this, I would tidy everything up and I will do that in the future if in fact I don't end up replacing this thing with something else. Because if you've been watching my channel, you will remember that I did the EcoFlow supercharger or alternator charger back in around May. But the problem with that was it only works with that XT150 cable that is proprietary to EcoFlow products. And they were supposed to come out with an MC4 adapter, but I haven't seen that yet. So this Blue Eddy Charger 1 perfectly will mount up with the Blue Eddy products so that's what i'm stuck with for now the blue eddy charger one does come with the correct i believe that's probably a three millimeter or maybe a two and a half millimeter allen key and the output side is going to be for my mc4 cables which come pre-wired this mc4 cable will go into the alternator charger no problem and so let's do let's loosen that up loosen it up nice and easy And if you wouldn't mind, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up on this video. A lot of the videos you're going to see about this product are a simple battery install. The person installing it may not end up using the product long term. I do like to test the things that I test on this channel as long term as possible. And so those thumbs ups definitely help me manage that. I'm going to loosen this screw just a little more. Now that I've got both of the leads in the hole, go ahead and gently tighten up. Now the good thing about using the shorter part of the Allen key here is I'm not gonna damage the threads. I'm also not gonna damage the Allen key hole itself because you don't really need a whole lot of torque on these kind of fittings, just enough really to keep your device or your, your cable from slipping out. And so that should be plenty for me right there. So if you are curious, this thing is about a little less than my hand. So maybe about five inches wide, two inches tall, maybe two and a half inches tall, and then maybe about four inches deep. I've got this side connected. Since I have so much room here, I'll go ahead and pull this one out. Same thing, I've got to loosen. Using the Allen key again, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this right here and let's see almost done oh and i almost forgot to mention blue eddy did provide this alternator charger to me free of charge uh in exchange for this video review but as with any review on my channel they don't have any control over what i say all of my thoughts and opinions are my own i do try to give the items as fair of a opportunity to succeed as possible and when they do fail i do actually mention in the video 
when products fail. Something that's very important to keep in the product reviews as fair as possible. And so I do want to point that out, but I've got the positive cable decently tightened up here. And now I'm going to go ahead and input that negative or that ground cable. And one of the first observations that I have is this alternator charger one or blue Eddy charger one is maximum output of 560 watts. Whereas the EcoFlow alternator is rated at a maximum output of 800 watts. However, as I stated before, this one uses MC4 cables, which is essentially compatible with anything that will accept solar panels. And you can vary the voltage input. So the main comparison between this and the EcoFlow alternator charger is this one is as of today, more universal. It has a slightly lower output. And those are the two main takeaways from those comparisons. And then I also have a Picron 500 watt one that is similar as well. However, I have not had the opportunity to install that. When I heard about this Blue Eddy Charger 1 coming out, I figured I might as well match the Blue Eddy Charger 1 to my Blue Eddy power stations that I keep in the Jeep at all times. So all I've got to do is hook up the MC4 cables, hook up the battery, and then we can test this thing. And my only true gripe about the AC240 and the B210 is that they come with different PV or DC inputs. So this one's for the B210 and this one's for the AC240. So if I had lost one of these, then I would be stuck with only using one of those as the input device. Now they do have different input wattages and voltages. However, I really wish with Blue Eddy in general, as they start to make more and more power stations, that they make the connections more universal. That is something, again, with EcoFlow, they have the XT150, which I mentioned is the proprietary connection for their alternator charger, but it is consistent throughout their brand. So while I am happy I can use the MC4 cables on the output of this charger one, I do wish the power stations and in fact, all of the expansion batteries started to become more universal because I do have, for example, the AC500 and the B300 and those are not compatible with these. And so I can't cross mix or I can't stack up those devices. And I would say for me, that's the most frustrating thing with Blue Eddy products. But ultimately the innovations do win and that is why I have the Blue Eddy in the back of my Jeep. So for my particular battery, I have a 13 millimeter socket on the the ground as well as a 13 millimeter socket on the positive. And so as long as I keep all of my tools well organized, I will always be able to find everything that I need. However, a few times I have dropped the nuts from these terminals. This exact set of terminals, I've dropped the nut one, once or twice because I start talking to the camera and as I talk to the camera, I lose control of that nut. And that is not the original nut, but luckily I do keep a few spare items here and there. And I am able to keep the vehicle well maintained. Now this thing doesn't have to be crazy tight. I am tightening it down until I get kind of that stop. And then I'm just going to give it a little bit of a, a tap like that. Same thing with the positive. I'm going to get the same one. This one actually doesn't have anything attached to it. So I'll go ahead and go straight to that main, which also happens to be in the middle. And since that's in the middle, I'm also hopefully less likely to lose that part. got that on I also use the stubby wrench because the stubby wrench 
helps prevent me from tapping any other metal parts in the engine bay while I'm messing with the batteries. Now, some folks that do it the, the absolute correct way, they're gonna have a tool that has maybe a rubberized grip or something. I don't have that here, but that is probably the more proper way to do that than this. Get this grommet cover on. Positive cables nice and co covered. Well, folks, I've got the charger one installed at least as good as I'm going to get it for now. So let's get on the road tomorrow and I'll go through and run you through some of the setup. I have already set it to my AC240 and it's already pumping out up to 580 watts. I am going to start my trip tomorrow, most likely with a fully charged power station, but I'm going to be cooking dinner. I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff and then I'm going to rely on that charger one to top off the power station every day while I'm out on the road. So we made it to our campsite last night, no problem. We've got tons of Jeeps with us today. And I cooked breakfast with my power station this morning. So we're at 90% on this Blue Eddy AC240 and B210, which means I used about 400 watt hours from this power station to cook breakfast this morning. And soon we're gonna head over to the Jeep Invasion, which is one of the reasons that we have all these Jeeps with us right now. And on the way there, I'm gonna recharge those batteries using that Blue Eddy Charger 1 battery charger. So I'm using my phone that also has my Bluetooth on it to record right now. And I just started up the vehicle. And what I wanna see is, and there it is, the output wattage on the Charger 1 is bumping straight up to 500 watts. And at this rate, in a little less than an hour, the power station will be topped off completely. So we've only input. been sitting here just a few minutes and I'm already up to 91%. And after about 30 minutes of driving, the thing is back up to 98%. So not bad, and this entire parking lot is full of Jeeps. So I pulled this charger out just to have it in my hand as I give you some final thoughts on how it performed over the weekend. And number one, I did intend to do a full cinematic review. However, I was spending time with my daughter. I got carried away with that and I honestly didn't feel like filming a lot over the weekend. But what I did do while I was out this weekend is I consumed quite a bit of power from my battery bank setup and I recharged that power using this device without any issues at all. In fact, every day during my trip, I drove for about an hour or two and I was able to get up to 98 to 100% charge on this battery system with no issues. So what do I think overall about the Blue Eddy Charger 1? Well, I mentioned a few things that you really need to consider at the beginning of the video. And those are brand agnostic, meaning that whether you get the Blue Eddy, the EcoFlow, the Picron, any of those alternator chargers are gonna have a similar risk associated with them. And so keep that in mind, you are installing something that draws from your vehicle's charging system and puts power into your battery bank. And depending on your setup, you could possibly replace something like this with just a couple of solar panels. However, this thing works perfect in the sense that anytime the vehicle is running, I'm putting 500 watts of power back into my battery bank. And so for my daily consumption, even without solar power, within an hour, I'm putting 500 watt hours. If I'm driving somewhere long distance, within a couple of hours, I'm gonna recharge these massive batteries that I carry with me. The price of the Blue Eddy Charger 1 is just a little higher than the cost of like a 200 watt solar panel. So if you don't wanna go through the process of setting a solar panel up independently on your roof that charges those batteries, this is an excellent alternative, especially if you do a lot of stealth camping where you don't really want any external accessories that might tip off people that you were camping in your vehicle. So now that I'm back, I'm fully recovered. I've got all of my camping supplies out of the vehicle ready to reset. I want to go ahead and get this thing set up in a more permanent manner in the back of my Jeep because overall, I think I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna use it for at least the next few months to power whatever power station I have in the back of the Jeep. If you have any questions or comments about how the Blue Eddy Charger 1 works or even any information that you need about the comparison between the EcoFlow charger and this one, let me know in the comments. And just so you don't forget, please give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you in my next adventure.